This happened when I was 14. I'm 17 at the moment and still linger on the memory. I was home alone that night, as my mom was working an overnight shift, and my older brother didn't live at home at the time, so therefore I had the house to myself. I'd say it was maybe 9 or 9, 30 p.m., and I was in my room working on homework and listening to music with my headphones in, loud enough to where I really couldn't hear things. I remember for a fact that all of the doors were locked, and I stayed home alone pretty often, so I didn't have a reason to worry. Maybe an hour later, I decided to take my headphones out and take a break from homework. I heard noises in my kitchen and footsteps walking around downstairs, which was odd because my mom wasn't supposed to be home until 7 a.m. the next morning. But she could have taken an early night for whatever reason, but just to make sure, I locked my bedroom door and texted her, asking if she came home. It took her about 10 minutes to respond, but when she did, she said no, she was still at work, and why I asked. At that point, I was freaking out, because my mom and brother are the only ones with keys into the house, and myself, of course. So... I decided to text my brother. Sure enough, he said no. He wasn't in the house. So I told both him and my mom about the situation. And my my brother wasn't far from the house, so he said he would be there soon, and to call the cops. As I was trying to find a hiding spot in my room with my phone to call the police, I heard my name called from downstairs that got me thinking. Did whoever was in the house know me personally? A family friend, maybe? I didn't respond out of fear of who knew my name and was calling it, and I didn't recognize the voice. I called the cops and was on the phone with them when my name was called again, followed by, I know you're up there, and I heard someone starting to walk up the stairs. Again, I didn't respond, but I was pure terrified the police assured me they were on the way and to stay put. I was still texting my brother. While this was all happening, L, he informed me he was five minutes away. That's when I heard the front door slam. After I heard the door slam, about five minutes later, the police arrived and assured me it was them and that I could come out shortly after my brother arrived back home. The police looked around the property and all over the house, but there was no trace of whomever was once here. However, there was damage on the door and lock from being forged open and looked to be done by some sort of tool to pick the lock. Everything turned out okay because nothing was taken oddly enough. But the upsetting part is whomever was in my house wasn't found. From that night forward, though we got cameras installed and got a better lock, I lived in the middle of nowhere, in the country. Closest house was a few miles away. My parents never let me be home alone, but they had to go get groceries from a town 40 minutes away, and I begged to not go. I just wanted to stay home and play Barbies. They agreed. I was having the time of my life, and all of a sudden, I hear both my dogs barking outside. They only bark like they did when a car pulls up. I'm on the second floor of my home. The front door is on the first floor, right by the stairs to the basement. I look out my window and just stare because I had a sinking feeling in my stomach and I start screaming. I see a man walking up my driveway. So I start hyperventilating and crying and wondering how this person even got here. My driveway is pretty long, thank God, but covered in trees. He's about 20 feet from my front door and that thing is never locked, so I bolted down the stairs and thankfully got there in time. It was right out of the movies, it felt like, because as I was in front of the door locking it, I heard a pounding on the door. Then I heard the door handle trying to open. I book it to the dining room to make sure the screen door is locked, and I call my dad on the home phone. Oh, he starts swearing. Not directly at me, like, what the F blah blah. I hear him going through the garage, and I'm just freaking the F out, and he's still trying to open the door. He eventually goes through the yard and seems to be looking for something. My dog is small, but she's barking a storm. I try to call my closest neighbor, who was a retired cop, but of course he wasn't home. Felt like 30 minutes, but the guy finally leaves, and my dad and mom get home. Turns out it was a very, very drunk neighbor... His house was like seven miles away. Came into our yard looking for my dad because he drove his car into the ditch and we live on a tire farm. It wasn't uncommon for my dad to help these people. They were drunk all the time and looked for rides. Anyways, my dad took his gun and went to their house and threatened them to never do shit like that again. If I remember, they were trying to get into our vehicles too. Scariest time of my life didn't stay home alone for a long time after that. Even thinking back on it now, my heart races. I don't think he would have done anything to me because they respected my dad. He's like 6'5 and has anger issues. But at the time, I didn't know, huh? Edit to add, these people ended up making me a dream catcher and a tribal blanket. They had 10 people living in the two-bedroom house of theirs, so I didn't recognize the man. But their house ended up getting raided for drugs or something, and two dead dogs were found stacked behind the stove. So maybe like 50% nice, 50% harmful.
My sister and I were home alone and we heard someone big running up the stairs. The stairs make lots of noise with slight pressure so when there's someone big on them you can tell. I went out of my room to check but saw no one anywhere and my sister also came out of her room and she asked if that was me. I said no and we both looked around to see if there was anyone but found no one in the whole house. We were confused and called our parents and just waited until they got back and that was that. I grew up in a very rural area. Our house was on the end of a dead-end road in the middle of Midwest farm country. In high school, I was in cross country and track and found it easiest to run in the late evenings on nights when there wasn't practice. One night, which was fairly well lit by the moon I was running the last quarter mile to my house, and I saw someone else running toward me on the road from the direction of my house. I live on a dead-end road. There is nothing but farm fields behind it, and it definitely wasn't my mom running. It surprised me so much I stopped for a second to consider what I was seeing. I remember exactly what the runner was wearing, and I watched her run another five or six strides towards me before she disappeared or blended into the night like the Predator or some such. Now, it could have been exhaustion or dehydration, I guess, but I've run a lot farther and a lot longer than I did that night without seeing anyone materialize and evaporate. I never did again, either on that road or anywhere else. It was the scariest thing that ever happened to me. I had a mine, ran home crying panic tears, and I'm not ashamed to tell you about it. I couldn't bring myself to run at night again for a month. While growing up, I often had opportunities to stay home alone when I was younger. Since my mother and father were forced to travel because their parents were ill and lived overseas, and my, much older, siblings wouldn't get off work until at least an hour or two after I finished school. I was used to being home alone and actually enjoyed it. One Saturday when I was 12, my parents had to go to a funeral for an old friend in the next city. My brother had already moved out by then, and my sister was nowhere to be found, so my parents decided to leave me home alone for the entire day. I was so excited. Being home alone for a whole day meant I could blast music and spend as much time as I wanted on the computer. When my brother moved out, we converted his bedroom, the last one at the end of the hallway, into an office, and my computer was in there. We still had dial-up internet at the time, so my parents added an extra phone line in the house so I would stop taking up their line. I ran into the office to use what I called my personal phone line to call my friend who lived a few streets over to see if she wanted to come hang out. She was really upset. She told me she was having boyfriend problems and needed someone to talk to, so she'd be right over. I thought to myself, girl talk means we need a good treat, and ran out of the office so that I could go check out what was in the kitchen. That's when I saw her. A pale woman dressed all in black with a black bun on her head. Her head tilted as I ran by the corner. I couldn't really see her eyes, but for some reason I remember thinking that she was smiling. I got some serious chills and felt instantly frozen, but I ignored it, thinking I was paranoid from being alone all day, and ran down the stairs. I couldn't believe my imagination was playing tricks on itself like that. I called my friend to see if she had left yet, and since no one answered the phone at her house, I figured she had. Something still didn't feel right, so I put on my jacket and headed out to the driveway to wait for her. When she arrived, she asked me what I was doing outside. I said something weird just happened, but I'll tell you over white hot chocolate. And we went inside, took off our coats, and drank our hot chocolate in the kitchen, while she told me about the problem she was having with her boyfriend. Since both her boyfriend and I had webcams, and we knew he had friends over, we went into my computer room upstairs to call him and see if him and his friends wanted to web chat with us. While she was on the phone with him, I was talking to his friend on the computer and setting up my webcam. While my friend was on the phone, she turned around and looked out the door into the hallway. She told her boyfriend that she'd have to call him back. She looked at me wide-eyed and white-faced and said, There's a woman in your hallway wearing a black dress. I got up from my computer chair and closed the door without looking into the hallway. I frantically tried to remember if I had told her why I was outside when she got there. I then asked her, Didn't I mention that when you got here? And she said no. And I said, how was her hair? And my friend said, in a bun. We both freaked out, opened the door, made sure the coast was clear, and bolted down the stairs. I called my parents and told them I was going to my friend's house, but they told me they were a few minutes away and insisted that I wasn't leaving the house. When they got home, I told them what happened, but they didn't believe me. For the next few days, I kept thinking I was seeing her, but I wasn't sure if it was my imagination because I was scared or because she was really there. Weird things happened too, like the calendar in my bedroom would be upside down when I got home from school, or things would go missing from my room. Eventually, these weird occurrences stopped, 
but a couple of months later, we adopted a two-year-old cat. From the moment she was brought home, all the way up to today, she has three or four random corners of the house that she meows at constantly. And every once in a while, after meowing at a particular spot, she shrieks and runs away as fast as she can. One of these spots is in my bedroom. And lately, he's been meowing at it every night. Let me start off by saying I am no writer, but I long time lurker around these parts. I love good scare, but only when it's exactly that. A good scare, not when it's real, yet so unreal, paralyzing almost. I can't describe what I'm feeling, so here's what is happening. Sunday evening rolls around and all I want is to relax a bit. I'm fairly new to my current house, so things still aren't quite settled, and I'm not adjusted to all of the strange creaks and cracks of this place. It's just me and my dogs. My husband had to go out of the country for business, but it's been feeling like so much more than that today. I'm naturally paranoid, so I try not to entertain the ideas I get about being a young woman home alone. I just make sure my doors are locked and I go about my business. My dogs aren't much when it comes to guarding. My old girl is deaf and the other is afraid of his own shadow. Anyway, all I want to do is relax and take a bath. It's been a long time since I've been able to relax like this and it feels surreal. It's the simple things. The tub takes its time to fill itself, but it eventually does. I'm soaking for what feels like a great amount of time when I start thinking, did I lock the door? I think the garage might be open. And right at that moment, I hear something from downstairs fall. Shit. It's probably the dogs. Calm down. I need to talk myself down so the anxiety doesn't get the best of me. I figured it's probably time to get out and dry off. I've had my bath, and I don't really want to feel vulnerable right now. So, I put some clothes on. This is where shit got too real for me. I'm wrapped in a towel going from the bathroom to my bedroom, and I hear what sounds like my dog's paw walking around in the hardwood floors downstairs. Awesome, right? Obviously nobody is down there, and it must have been one of the dogs to knock something over. Great. I thought... Walking into my bedroom, I see Dog Winnie snoozing away, and around the corner from my bed comes Dog at two. What the hell? Immediately, I close and lock my bedroom door. I'm frozen. What would mimic the sound of puppy paws like that? A few seconds pass, I'm still frozen and the sound of paws stops. Maybe I left my whole door open? A little raccoon or something came in? How did I manage to leave a whole door open? Now I hear scratching. I'm locked in my room and I don't know what to do. A few minutes pass and I haven't moved, nor have I heard anything else. I need to suck it up and figure out what is going on. Still in just a towel, I slowly open the door and make my way to the stairs. The sun went down. It's dark and I'm too afraid to move towards a light switch, so I just stand there for another minute. Finally, I got the light on. I make my way downstairs and this isn't the relaxation I had in mind, but nothing seems out of the ordinary. A broom fell over, but how does that explain the sound of paws on the floor? It doesn't, but I'm trying not to think about it. Like I said, I'm usually overly paranoid anyway. I swear though, I keep seeing things. Shadows, maybe. I can't tell. I don't actually see anything, but I feel like there's always something there right in the corner of my eye. I can't deal with this shit. I just need some sleep. I know my mind's playing tricks on me. I make my way back upstairs, and I know both of my dogs are in the bedroom with me. The door is closed, locked, and I'm as far away from it as I could be. I still feel like I'm seeing strange shadows, but what can I do? Call the cops? Yes? Hello, officer? There's a shadow on my wall. I know I'm just crazy... Only a few seconds pass after I lay down when one of my dogs seems more alerted than usual. He whimpers from what sounds like fear. He then goes to a slight growl. I don't hear anything. Now both dogs are up and growling and now I'm nearly shitting myself because what is my deaf dog growling at? They're getting worked up now and I can't move. I'm hiding under my blankets completely frozen, nearly crying. It's pitch black and I feel a weight on the other side of my bed, like somebody else had just climbed in. My dogs are calm now, but I refuse to move, eventually falling asleep. I wake up just a few hours later and check the time. It's only 10, 15. I must have been having a nightmare because that's the only way I can explain my anxiety. A few minutes later and I want to get up for some water when I see boot prints all over my floor. This has been my night so far and I don't know what to make of anything. It doesn't make any sense. So this happened when I was younger, teen, but I remember it distinctly as one of the weirdest things that has happened to me that I legitimately can't explain. It was really late at night and I was staying up. It was a school night. Such a rebel, around 3am. 
My parents had gone to stay out in a bush for a night, and me and my stepsis got free reign of the house. Weird situation, but relevant. She was sleeping outside in a converted bus. So earlier, she'd gotten herself ready for bed, and I always walked her out to the bus because it was scary at night. She would never go back inside the house in the middle of the night. All of this is to explain that I was definitely alone in the house from around 10 p.m. until the next morning. 3 a.m., I'm sitting at my computer and I hear footsteps coming up the hallway. It creaked a lot. They go to the bathroom area and I don't look away from my screen. I'm confused but thought maybe my steps as had come back inside, as unusual as that would be. I heard the creaking again of the hall. And finally it paused at what my ears perceived to be around where my door was door was open. There's a long, slow creak as if weight is shifting and someone is leaning forwards right behind me. And then a loud, distinct laugh that sounded identical to my stepsister's laugh. It was a teasing tone. I was looking at something stupid on my computer and thought perhaps she was laughing at that. Initially caught up in some mild annoyance that I was being laughed at, I didn't turn around. I rolled my eyes and said, yeah, 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 and actually thought for a second about how odd it was that I hadn't heard any footsteps leaving back down the hallway. I looked behind me and all the lights were off and my stepsis was nowhere. I never heard the front door open or close. I asked my stepsis the next day, and she looked horrified and thought I was lying at first to scare her. I thought she was trying to scare me. We were both very confused but remembered other weird things that have happened in that house. Stories for another day. Thanks if you read all this. Anyone ever experience anything similar? For context, my father's organs were failing, and he was rotting away at my half-brother's house with the rest of my family and the kids. He wasn't looted at all, and couldn't really understand much of what was going on or what people were saying. I was home alone, and yesterday he passed, and the funeral guys took him. We planned on cremating him, and yesterday, when I finally fell asleep at 4 a.m., I had a terrible night terror, something I haven't had in years. However, this was nothing like I ever experienced. I kept having false awakenings at least 20 times in that dream each one involving my father and his spirit interacting with us. I woke up with only an hour of sleep, terrified. I got two texts at the same time shortly before waking up, one from my brother and one from my mother, just saying yes. Do keep in mind, I always kept my phone on mute, and it wasn't a delay or anything since I was calling and texting a friend before sleeping. We were up most of the night together since she has law school, and I don't get to speak to her often. I don't know if this was at all related, but it can't be a coincidence. I knew something was going on, I was no stranger to the paranormal, but nothing like this. I went outside my bedroom, and I asked if it was him, if he could give me a sign. I heard something shift in the living room, and I knew. The temperature was abnormally cold. I went into his bedroom, and the closet light I left on was turned off. I asked for a sign after turning it back on, and I heard a few taps. I began to get a little spooked out. I went into the bathroom and asked for another. The light turned on and began to flicker. At this point, I was scared out of my mind. I couldn't stop shaking. I had a cigarette, tried to call my brother. He didn't believe me, and ended the call to go back to sleep. I called an old friend I haven't spoken to in a while. He was pretty much the biggest expert on these things that I ever knew. He got out of bed and got onto Discord with me, which I webcammed as well just in case. We decided to do a lesser banishment along with some Latin prayers. When doing so in his room, the already cold temperature dropped even further. I was shaking uncontrollably. He tried to stop me, or I guess interfere by moving things and grabbing a running cable from under the door. And I knew I wasn't going crazy. My friend saw it too. He messed with random things such as closing a cabinet I had opened for tape for a cross. I'll get into that in a second. And just moving random things to make noise, blowing out an incense stick I lit and in all my experience with incense sticks, I never once had them just go out, especially after. Quite a bit of the stick had already burned. It didn't work so we went with something a little stronger in terms of exorcism. My family isn't really religious, much less believe in the paranormal. We had no Bible, no cross. I made a makeshift one and got a Gatorade bottle, cleaned it out, put in some water, some salt, I didn't think table salt would work honestly, and began a prayer to bless it thanks to the guidance of my old friend. I went into every room besides one I ended up forgetting, splashing it and starting prayers in hopes that he may find peace. I of course told him I forgave him for everything he has done. After all of that he ended up calming down, I think, The atmosphere just seemed lighter. I opened the windows, got some light in as the sun was rising at this point. I think he's still lingering for a bit, but he's not being hostile anymore. I told him I'd take care of the kids and his little chihuahua ginger. I just hope he finds peace. This was honestly one of the scariest nights I have ever had, and I didn't expect it at all. I mean, a spirit of a man who passed not even a day ago, 
able to move things, turn things on and off. He was already pretty in tune with spirits in terms of animals. But was it because of anger? I felt like he was going through the stages of grief since he was unable to do so before his death. But Christ Almighty, I'm still processing that all this happened not even a few hours ago. I actually just kind of realized this, but my Siberian husky rose. I think I know why she was acting the way she was all night. I'm just hoping it's over now and he can rest in peace. To add to all this, I hope the submission is okay. I've never posted here and I just read the rules. I'm grateful for my old friend who went out of his way to help me despite going through some things himself. I wouldn't have been able to do it without him. Update 1. I'm absolutely grateful for everyone sharing their own experiences and giving me some insight on what this all could have been. I cannot thank you enough. I don't really have many people to go to about this. I've experienced small paranormal things with old dead pets, but never something like this at all. I'm a lot more calm and everything seems to be a lot lighter. I don't feel exactly unsafe anymore. I genuinely think he was just going through stages of grief, if it was my father. I genuinely do believe it is though from the interactions, since he just seems like he's checking on things and lingering around the house. But it's mostly been in his room, it's absolutely cold in there. He hasn't done much since blessing the house. Just small things like interacting with his dog Ginger and messing with the thermostat, which is something he always used to do. He preferred the cold and had a portable AC next to his bed at all times. Update 2. It would not stop messing with the thermostat the third time I changed it back. It got upset. It was freezing. I heard pitter-patters and shuffling. Woke up my friend calling him and explaining it. He thinks it was not my father, but instead something latching onto him and feeding off him. And when he was gone, it went for me. Which makes sense, I've been having a lot of episodes with everything going on. We were thorough with our prayers. I went through every single room, every single closet, bathroom, little corner. Originally, I was going to just do the rooms until I heard random shuffling in random spaces of the rooms. I put on powder and other means on the thermostat, just in case. So when the heat turns off, I can check and see if it touched it. I don't feel any cold spots. Maybe some slightly chill spots, but I think whatever was here is gone. Nothing was freezing, and the temperature went up. I went through at least 10 different prayers using an LSB ritual, holy water, and a cross. I left the cross in my father's room, just in case. I hope whatever was here is gone, or at the very least knows not to dick around. I don't think it was my father, and I'm happy about that. Honestly, it gave me the confidence. No holds barred. I think this is the end, but on the off chance it isn't, I'll update this post. With that, thank you everyone for your love, support, and words of advice. Especially my friend for helping guide me through all this. Update 3. After doing whatever I could, I kept the benediction prayers going all morning and while I slept until an hour ago. I go outside my bedroom just a bit ago, and lo and behold, it changed the thermostat back to 60 and banged on the toaster oven that I was going to use. Seeing what I can do in terms of my friend's nuclear option, any advice would be greatly appreciated. I feel this thing after feeding for, I'm assuming, a while. Refuses to leave and might require something stronger. Update 4. Nothing has worked so far besides the benediction prayers, at least keeping it from going postal. Long story short, it destroyed, smeared, evaporated most of the crosses I drew using blessed oil. It was not natural by any means. Trust me, I say that with sound mind and within reason, or lack thereof. I honestly give up at this point until I'm able to possibly get some more supplies to cleanse the place. I've done all I can at this point in time. Update 5. It's a lot more calm. Family's back. Discuss it with them when they started noticing things, too. We're going to be moving. Not because of the entity, but a lot. So, in the end, since it isn't long-term by any means, I think we'll be okay. If this thing is still around by any means when we move, then I'll take serious, drastic measures. Either way, thank you all once again. It's stressful because of all the life changes all at once, but I know this is the best for all of us to move on with our lives. Won't get too personal on that, but thank you all. I wasn't alone, but I was alone, if you get my drift. I took care of my mom during her final years with dementia. Every day was hard, but others seemed impossible. On really rough days, I'd go into the garage to decompress, smoke pot, cry, rage, scream, and sometimes hit trash cans with a baseball bat. Well, one particularly hard day, my mom had smeared feces all over the house. So I was in the garage sobbing and mumbling incoherently to myself when I said out loud to my previously deceased father, Dad, I need help. What do I do? When suddenly the garage door into the house swung open on its own, and I went into some kind of trance and was able to clean up the house without having a complete meltdown. I can't explain it, 
but I'm pretty sure my dad was guiding me through the worst of it all. Not really home alone. But when I was little, I remember as my dad was taking us to bed, I ran up first to sneak behind my bedroom door. The plan was to jump out and scare my brother before bed, as my bedroom was just opposite the bathroom and he had to walk past it to get to his room. However, behind the bedroom door was two strange men hiding. One had a beard and long hair, the other I don't clearly remember, but think he was very skinny. The guy with long hair whispered to me to go away, so I calmly went away and slept with my dad. Mom was working nights, and this wasn't uncommon for me, so he never questioned it. I was rightly spooked and didn't want to be on my own, but didn't tell told my dad what I saw as I was petrified inside. Straight up thought I'd been told off by some creepy ghost. We were robbed that night. My brother also woke up that night to go to the bathroom and saw the downstairs light on from the staircase. At the time, he thought it was our mother, and would normally, if he got up early, run down and see her. For some reason, he didn't go downstairs that night, and instead hopped in bed with me and our dad, too. When my mom came home, the downstairs was trashed, and she was terrified something happened to us. She ran upstairs in a panic and found us all in bed safe and sound. Home insurance was able to salvage most of the losses, and we got a dog not long after that as a deterrent for thieves, which growing up never had another issue again. So I guess not really unexplainable, but strange or scary story?